how do you graph the basic trig functions? La 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 la. Uh, so we're looking at this part and we're talking about graphing now the sine and cosine functions. So with this paper, um, you need to come get it from me. So with it, you're going to go ahead and actually draw out at the parent graphs for sine and cosine. So we did this already when it came to our foldable earlier in the year. We've already done this. But now we're going to go more in depth. And we're going to start doing transformations with it and all that great stuff. But this is our parent graphs. So it's the parent graph for sine and the parent graph for cosine. So if you need to write on this paper parent graph, write that on it. At some, somewhere. Let's put it right here. Parent graphs. <laughs> All right, so looking at each one of these, look here. These are all in radian mode, right? Because it doesn't have, doesn't have, does not have a degree symbol. So these are all radian modes. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put these into the calculator using our radian modes, using our radian mode. So here, again, check your calculator, check your mode, and make sure it's in radians. So let's do this, so hitting mode. Just the mode button. Just the mode button. Mine is already in radian. So we're good. If yours is not, you need to come down and hit enter on radian. Let's change it over. So for each one of these, we're going to put these in for our angle. So that is sine x. These are x values here. So we put in 0 in for x. Pi over 2, we substitute in for x. Pi, we substitute in for x. 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi, we substitute in for x. So here, we do sine 0, and we get an answer of 0. We do sine, alpha y equals again, alpha y equals, we do pi divided by uh, over 2. And remember how to do pi, hit enter, got one there. And again, for those that forgot how to do pi, we do second, and the caret button, that's pi. Second and caret, this is pi. Alright, so then we do sine pi. Get zero. Right, and then we do sine 3 pi over 2. Enter, we get negative 1. And then we have sine 2 pi. We put a 0 right there. Okay, so we have ordered pairs going on. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, pi over 2 and 1, pi and 0, 3 pi over 2 and negative 1, 2 pi and 0. And what we're going to do, these are x values that we're going to have. So on our x-axis here, we're going to put those values. So we know zeros right here. Now this is pi over 2. This part here is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And 2 pi. And it's always going to follow that same pattern for the parent graph. Pi, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. On the left side, we're going to take these points here, and we're going to just follow it backwards. So we're going to start with here, then here, then here, then here. So that's pi over 2 on this side because it's on the left side of the equal of the, um, the of 0. We're going to do a negative pi over 2. Here we have negative pi. Here we have negative 3 pi over 2. And here we have negative 2 pi. So if you look at it, it's kind of like a mirror here. This, These are here, this here, that's here, that's here. Now we graph it, it's not going to be the, this, whatever's here is going to be here. It's going to it's going to keep the pattern flowing. But I'll talk about it in a few seconds. All right, so here, we know this is going to be a negative 1. It's going to be a positive 1. And what we're going to do is plot these points to match up with that. So we said 0, 0 is the first point. So we plot that right here in the middle. 0, 0, that's the origin. 
We have pi over 2 and 1, so we move up here. And with the points, just be a bit, like, plot them as best you can and as accurate as possible. So pi over 2 and 0, pi and 0, sorry. Pi and 0. 3 pi over 2 and negative 1. So 3 pi over 2 down negative 1. And um, we have 2 pi and 0. So 2 pi and 0. When we graph it out, we're going to do nice and smooth curves. So don't make these pointed, these aren't pointed edges like this. This is wrong. And if you do that, you're going to get pretty much your graph is going to be wrong. And I'm going to mark it wrong. Even though you have everything in place because these point, these graphs are not absolute value graphs. Like the actual pointed graphs and everything. These are nice smooth graphs. So they're nice and smooth. The nice smooth curves. It's just like the um, John Legend song. All your curves and all your edges. All your perfect imperfections. So with that, make sure they're nice and smooth curves. 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 Alright, so if you look at it, the graph comes and it makes this wonderful shape here. Now, the graph continues to follow the same pattern all the way through all the way through so here we're going to just continue on with this pattern so it went down it went up and then it came back down so again here it's going to continue down this point then go back up it's going to go up to the highest point again and then come back down So the graph continues on with the same pattern all the way through. And again, it's all curves, curves and edges. Okay, so that's the graph of the sine, cosine, uh, sorry, the sine function. Now with this, before we move on, even when we did our um, parent graphs, we did this in our foldable. Come on, our domain and range. Now, before we do our domain, I need to add something here to our graph. Let's make sure that we continue this line here. This is going to go on forever, following the same pattern of going up and then down, then up and then down, then up and then down. It's going to follow that same pattern. So we have arrows on both sides, and hopefully you guys remember from um, the very beginning when we talked about interval notation, when we have arrows and graphing all that good stuff. And if we have an arrow on either side, this side and this side, it means we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative positive. And what is our range for the graph? From negative one, the lowest part, to the highest part, which is one. So negative one. Two one, and are those closed circles here? Yes, sir. So that's going to be our range and our domain for our parent graph for sine.